Did you know that different lenses render different color tones across your entire image? How about contrast? You can actually get flatter color profile, if you will, out of your image with just the lens. No changes to camera settings or color profiles or anything. Now many of you probably already knew this and are like, duh dude, you've been in video for how long and didn't know that? Well, this was a recent discovery of mine while I was in Europe last month. While there, my Nikon D750 threw an error code and would not function. I took it to a camera store to see if they could repair it and found something much better. One of many cameras is a shop that specializes in film photography and rehousing vintage lenses for cinema cameras. I was immediately intrigued. I happened to have my C100 Mark II with me on the trip and my inner old school vintage geek was fully aroused. Now I wanted to see the difference to an image that vintage lenses would make compared to modern lenses. Is it unmistakable? Can it be replicated in post with effects or filters? Would it make enough of a difference to warrant using a vintage lens on a paid client shoot rather than a modern lens? This video is the beginning of that journey of discovery. I ended up renting one of the lenses we are going to be look at in this video and performed a number of real life shooting tests with it, including filming part of a documentary project, the exact same ad shot for shot on a very popular modern lens that most of you probably have in your kit, the Sigma 18-35 art lens, to see what difference, if any, could be distinguished in the image. Are these lenses different enough to make a case for vintage glass belonging in your kit when it comes to paid client video? Videos. All this is coming in the next few videos, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see all of these juicy results. I asked the store owner if I could leave my MacBook Pro M1 in his shop as collateral and take each lens out of the shop for a couple of minutes to shoot some test shots and compare them. Now I must confess that because I was in a bit of a hurry to return to the shop and alleviate the potential anxiety of Bjark, the store owner, I sometimes struggled to get my subject in focus. It's been a while since I shot manual focus. And I also didn't pay attention to my aperture or shoot consistently there, I just tried to expose well, plus shooting outside on a semi cloudy day, semi-sunny day, makes this the most unscientific comparison ever. That's what pressure does sometimes. I shot each scenario at 35mm on my Sigma, and then again with the 35mm versions of the Minolta Roker, 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 the Pentax Takamar, and the Trial Plan Bubble Bokeh lens. Be aware that all of the footage in this video will be untouched and ungraded, so that you can see exactly what the lens itself is doing of its own. Let's dive into the results. First off, let's check out the flares. Who doesn't like a good flare? Starting with our reference lens, the Sigma has a nice small flare that you can catch in the sun. Very colorful, probably more color than I would prefer, but that may be just me. Hey dude. Of course, in this scenario, I'm shooting in extreme to force a flare. Not sure what flares I could capture in other circumstances, but we're just focusing on this one right now. On to the Minolta Rokor. Wow, that is a huge flare. Hexagon in shape, magenta in color, and huge in size. Way too much for me. Looks like I can also get yellow flares too. Interestingly enough, this lens also really changes the shape of the sun into a hexagon with pointed streak thingies jutting out from the corners. That's due to its having a six blade aperture. Granted, the Sigma shot here takes place when the sun is behind the cloud, so we aren't getting an apples to apples comparison. Unfortunate. The Pentax Takamar has a very, very small flare. It's actually rather difficult to create even when pointed at the sun, which I find intriguing. It's less colorful than the Sigma and only seems to show as magenta and blue. Okay, here I was able to get a yellow flare to show up with the others. Still not rainbow-like like the Sigma. Finally, the Trial Plan Bubble Bokeh lens renders another very small flare, mostly in the magenta and blue tones. Also, notice the shape of the sun here. Mostly a round sun with 12 small points and streaks. Highly technical terms here, I know. Rather than the hexagon shaped and six points from the previous two lenses. This is, of course, due to the fact that the aperture is created using 12 blades, whereas the other lenses are six-bladed apertures. As we'll see in our bokeh test, this 12-blade design was to assist in creating as round of bokeh as possible, hence its nickname, Bubble Bokeh. Let's look at color and contrast and dynamic range. This first shot is the Sigma for reference. Overall, it retains contrast even in the C-Log on the C100. Color tone is a little on the cool side, slightly loses detail in the highlights, but not much. 
Contrast is especially retained when underexposed, but I'd rather slightly overexpose and bring things back in post. Again, I'm not really pushing my exposure either way because I never go to those extremes on a client shoot, and I'm interested in normal in the field usage rather than lab tests. I was also using my MacBook M1 as collateral, so I wasn't gonna be dilly-dallying with anything superfluous. Now let's look at the Minolta Roker. I still don't feel like I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, I was surprised to see how similar this was to the Sigma. Cool in color tone, retains contrast, seems to only slightly lose details in the highlights when slightly overexposed. For me personally, you couldn't put either of these clips in front of me and get me to tell you which is the Sigma and which is the Roker. Now on to the Takamar. Immediately, we can see that this is a much warmer lens in color. Again, I am not doing any color grading. This is the exact same camera and nothing has been done in post. This is simply the lens rendering colors and contrast. Speaking of which, the contrast seems to be somewhat stronger than the Sigma and the Roker. Oh, and by the way, notice that because these vintage lenses were rehoused for cinema cameras, they have been declicked, making aperture adjustments completely smooth. Watch how the Sigma stutters when changing the aperture. The vintage lenses allow you to change exposure seamlessly within a shot and not ruin it. Love this. And finally, we have the trial plan bubble bokeh lens. Here, we again see a very clear difference. Back to the cooler tones, but a much flatter image. Again, I'm really intrigued how this can be achieved solely within the lens alone. You guys probably already know how, but this was a new thing for me. I really feel that the trial plan here protects the highlights and shadows better than the Sigma because of this flatter rendering. Further testing would probably be in order to really tell. Now, I'm sure you've all been dying to see the comparison in bokeh, so get ready to gorge your eyes with plenty of it. I lucked out and found a strand of twinkle lights a few yards from the store entrance. Or was it meters since I was in Europe? Hmm. The Sigma's bokeh begins round, but when pushed to an extreme, elongates into a pointed oval shape, much resembling a lemon. The Roker gets really weird with a kind of igloo-shaped bokeh. Notice the two points, flat side and then domed round side. Very strange and rather unpleasing in my book. The Pentax here overall does well in maintaining a rather round bokeh. In the foreground, I am able to get a slight hexagonal shape, but it's still rather soft. Overall, this is a pleasing and round bokeh. Finally, the trial plan bubble bokeh. This lens was designed to get very round bokeh and it really delivers. These are not perfect spheres, I think because of the twinkle lights that I'm filming are a little off themselves, but this lens really does well in making this bokeh as round as possible. Certainly the most pleasing example we've seen so far. So if we compare all these shots, the Minolta Roker was either so close to the Sigma that I couldn't see a tangible difference, such as the color and the contrast, or it yielded much uglier results than the Sigma, such as the flare or the bokeh. The trial plan bubble bokeh had a flatter color profile, if you will, and gorgeous bokeh, but even with that, it seems like it would be simple to get its colors and overall look to match the Sigma. Ergonomically, it was also difficult to use in that the focus ring was right up against the camera body and the aperture ring was towards the front of the lens, which is opposite of most lenses. Since I would be changing focus more than aperture, this was going to prove to be annoying. But it was the Takamar that really captured my attention. Much warmer tones, beautiful flares and bokeh, a soft sharpness, if that makes sense, detailed softness maybe, pleasing and comfortable to look at, high resolution but not overly sharp. Anyway, in the next couple of videos, we are going to take a deep dive into this lens and how it compares to the Sigma 18-35 art. Having this lens for four days gave me time to carefully compare these lenses and really see how different they are and if possible, to make them look identical. I will also shoot an identical promo video on the Takamar and the Sigma. So if that interests you, then subscribe now and you'll be able to catch them as I release them. See you in the next one. Actually, I won't see you, but you'll see me. So see me in the next one.